Hey y'all, welcome to or welcome back to Dave's Techway, whichever way the situation may be. I put out that video a while back about how to dedicate more memory to uh, to the integrated graphics on the Ryzen 5 2400 on the Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard. I had a few comments and uh, people wanting to know about the overclocking on this motherboard. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. We're going to take a look and we're going to see what uh, what kind of overclocking you've got on this motherboard and how to do it properly. Alright guys, in this little short video right here that you're watching right now, the for some reason the easy overclocking on this motherboard is disabled, it ain't supported. If you go into the advanced settings for the processor settings, everything's locked down. It, I can't get it off the auto settings, I can't get it off the 3.6 gigahertz that it comes with out of the box. I don't know if it's just my motherboard or if all these motherboards is like this or what's going on or if it's because of the 2400G itself. Um, but I couldn't go into the BIOS and get it and get it to overclock at all. Um, I messaged, uh, emailed Gigabyte a bit about this and uh, I haven't got a response back from them yet. But there is another way that we're going to do the overclocking on this motherboard. Um, AMD has got this system out as a piece of software. If you Google it, uh, just put in AMD Ryzen Master. This is uh, a free piece of software that AMD has put out to overclock the uh, CPUs and the uh, uh, integrated graphics on these processors. It actually will overclock any of the uh, AMD Ryzen processors. Um, and when you first open it up, this is the page you get. This is your current settings. It shows you what your processor speed is, the temperature, um, your this APU GFX setting down here. That is what your uh, integrated graphics is running at. And of course, you got your voltage. Um, it's got several different buttons here at the bottom. It's got a creator's mode. And it's got the gamers mode, then it's got profile one and two, then it's got a saved profile, the reset of the profile, and copy of the current profile. So we're going to go with profile one here. I did some testing with this already off camera. And uh, about the best I could get out of my GPU was uh, be about four gigahertz. And that was stable. I got it up to 4.05 and ran Cinebench, but once I put Prime 95 against it, it wasn't stable. It wouldn't hold. The best I could get out of my GFX clock speeds on mine was 1560. Is that the motherboard? Is it the processors itself? You know, it could be just the uh, silicon lottery. I'm sure you all heard of that. And, you know, it kind of depends on how good your, how good the materials is that came out of your processor. Um... To use this software, it's pretty simple. Um, they got all your cores locked together right through here. You can either adjust it by moving these up and down, or you can uh, also adjust them by these here. Either way, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Um, like I said, I know my max is 4.0 to be stable. I get 4.05, but it ain't stable with that. It can't run Prime 95. Uh, my GPX or my integrated graphics and you, know, you just take the slider and you move it back and forth here to uh, set it the way you want and I know mine was at 1560 that was the best that I could get you get it close then you take your right and left arrows and move them to get to where you want it to set at exactly just like that um, right here is your core voltage these here control your V, uh, the voltage for your processing cores. Down here is your voltage for your uh, graphics, which I left all of them set. You can also come down here to the memory controller, and you can actually adjust the memory clock on the uh, for the integrated graphics. I left mine at 1500 for all my tests. But that's pretty well just a little short breakdown of how the AMD Ryzen Master software looks and some of the capabilities of it, the basic functionalities of it. 
when the software first came out, you know, people was questioning if it actually did anything to the GPU and the CPU, if it was actually doing anything to the processors. Because even once you use the software to adjust your CPU speeds, it still shows, and Windows, it still shows you only pushing 3.6 gigahertz and boosting up to 3.9, which is what the Ryzen 5 2400G does out of the box. So people was kind of questioning if it actually did any good. Like I said, I've done all this off camera. I don't want to bore you with all of the running of all the tests and all this. But I do have uh, some screenshots of my Cinebench runs. Right there they are. Um, you know, the first one right here, one on your left, that's at 3.6 gigahertz. The second one right there, that is the 4.0 gigahertz, which is what mine is stable at. And the last one is the Cinebench score for the 4.05 gigahertz. Which, like I said, it would run the Cinebench, but once the stress tested it, it wouldn't, it couldn't maintain that speed, it would crash. So mine ain't stable at the 4.05. As far as the graphics goes, um, I used to have a benchmark for my graphics test, like most people do. Right here on the left, that's, uh, four, that's the 400 megahertz, you know, that's what it comes out of the box at. The next to that one over here, that's the 1550 megahertz speeds and the te what I got out of it. Now this is a little bit strange on this one. The far right is at 1560 megahertz, which for some reason my score went down a little bit on it. And when I ran them benchmarks on having benchmark, I had my memory set to two gigabytes of video RAM. But yeah, guys, um, like I said, I can't get into the BIOS. I can get into the BIOS, but it seems to be locked down. I don't know what the deal is with that. But that AMD Ryzen Master software, it does actually make a difference in the performance. You can overclock using it. Um, like I said, you know, I showed you the results that I got out of it, which it could be just the processor. It may be the limitations of the motherboard. I'm not too sure on that. Um, you know, the best thing you could do is try it yourself and see what kind of results you get out of it and see if it makes you happy or, you know, whatever. But yeah, this was the overclocking on the Gigabyte B450 DS3H. Guys, it's just kind of a breakdown, kind of shows you what I got out of it. I didn't want to bore y'all with running the center bench scores in real time. I didn't want to bore y'all with running the heaven benchmark scores in real time. Um, you know, it took me hours to put this together and to do this testing, and I don't want no four or five hour video. Nobody ever watches that long of videos anyways, I don't think. But, uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on how to, and what kind of performance you can get out of the motherboard that we have here today from Gigabyte. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more content when I put it out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell where you can get an email whenever I put something new out. And uh, until next time, you all have a good day.